Now it's Show time us to how dress the burrito that hats wood. are made. One at a time, the pencils shoot through a device called a lacquering head. It coats the wood in paint. Flyer, that's uh, proprietary. Is this Knowledge. the new resident zombie? I can't show that on stream. No, this is not Resident Evil. This is how to make pencils. Paint yellow in this case. See, that's how they slide on the aluminum ferrule. A lot of people don't know that part. Where's the Jake Paul poster? I still got it. One second, I'll get it. Got it back. ...into the ferrule's other end and squeezes that tight. Meat balls for all. The pencils are finally ready to roll. By the time they roll off, they're pointed perfection. So that's how pencils is made. Thanks everybody for uh, tuning in today. Let's see how carrots is made. Donkey, remember when you said you hate pencils? No, no, I don't hate pencils. I do like pens better, though. Maybe I should watch that. How are pens made? Hey, Donkey, it's Vinny. Could you tell Polly over there that I got his lunch? Meatball sub, same as always. Oh, I'll tell him. I'll tell him. Don't worry. Thank you, plastic. This is very interesting, actually. How big is your peepee donkey? Robot, don't say that. Peeled by rough stone rollers. Hi, Donkey. You are my sunshine. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, all of my subscribers. Remember to download Snake Noise, all of my lovers. Hey Pencil, did you know that Jake Paul's dad was actually a pencil maker before he had his sons? He said in an interview if he could go back to pencil making he would. Jake Paul's dad was a pencil maker? Donkey, that... will they ever True? do how it's made for the Nintendo 64 disk drive? How is it made Nintendo 64 disk drive? I don't know how it did it. Oh, see, the carrots are weighed and are dumped into bags. Okay. Oh, there's the carrot man. Wow. Your Steam account got hacked? Oh, that sucks. How are you going to play, uh... How are you going to play Bad Rats now? Can you get a carrot factory? I don't got that kind of money. I'll get you a cheese factory. How is it made? I love Nintendo Donkey Kong. 64 disk drive. Yeah, 
Here, this will tell us. How are those coordinated? Hello, and welcome to the GBC Productions channel. This is episode 57. In this video, I will be taking apart a Nintendo 64 disk drive. This is the second part of taking apart the Nintendo 64. Tim McGraw for the soundtrack on this. Here's what one of the discs looks like. I'm not going to take the disc apart, but I will open the shutter so we can take a little peek inside. The fuck is that? That's a floppy disc. Look at that. What the fuck is that? It's essentially a floppy disc. This particular disc is SimCity 64. What the Physically, fuck? It's similar in size to a zip disc. Did they actually put this out in America? Oh, happy birthday, Wolf. Happy birthday. Somebody call Bugs Bunny cause that's a lot of carrots. I hope somebody gets you a bunch of pencils and a bunch of carrots for your birthday. It was Japan only. But it's 64 megabytes. Dungo, you are so epic, dude. The I love the face cam. priority over the cartridge. So if a disc is in, it will start that game instead of the cartridge. So let's take a... Oh, you guys want to see my game collection? All right. All right. One second. So let me get my Jake Paul back up. I don't know why this thing keeps coming down. Alright. There. That should be good. Alright, I'll show you guys my game collection. Thank you, Dunk, for getting me through my super hard time. Three. Alright. Here it is. Here's all of them. Dunky the Jakey Paul poster fell. Super Monkey Ball. Classic. Tilt and Roll on the World of 3D. One of the greatest games. One of my favorite games of all time. And before you ask, yes, I have this on GameCube. Star Fox 64 3D. Classic. Classic game of all. I just rate your game five stars on Play Store as you said it's so funny. Thank you. Thank you for rating my game of five stars. <laughs> it is so funny when you get it. This game was... Happy um, anniversary dunk. Can I get a carrot factory pretty please? This game was one of the first games to have Star Fox. I think How this was... How was Wonder World made? This is one of the first games to have Star Fox. Classic. Pokemon X. Pokemon X. Classic. One of the all-time classics. Uh, this game is so famous. This game is so famous across the whole world. And everybody loves this one so much. This is practically, this is pretty much the next evolution in Pokemon. And if you can see there, you, you can see Mewtwo there in the middle. See Mewtwo? And I don't actually have the game for this. That's how much classic this is. I'm actually, this is box only. I go box only on that game because I don't like the game that much. Now here's an all-time classic. Kid Icarus. Classic. All-time classic. 3DS. See that? No. Right. See that? And this is, you know, this is, uh... This is like a, uh... Like, you have to aim with the stylus. And, um... It's rated E for uh, comic mischief, 
and mild suggestive themes and I do actually have the game for this as well and I also have the trading cards unopened completely sealed the trading cards that come with making this a I think this is a $300 collector's item now and if you actually look back there you can see little pits back there little faces that's pretty nice how they did that that's a classic game now this game got a lot it's very hey, controversial Gunky, can I get a happy birthday for this upcoming Saturday also damn that a 64 hard drive this is Pokemon Sun classic one of the all-time classics and this is one of the best games that Pokemon ever did. And if you look here on the back, you can see the tall executor. He's a very tall tree. See him, how big he gets? And this is why this is one of the best ones that they made. And this game, it's always daytime. And I do have, I do have the game for this. And if you, you really want to go, your video game collection in your next vid. It can do the Z ring bracelet Z. And a lot of people have that, and that's really important to get the. How are knack made? All right, now this is the last game that I have. Pilot Wings Resort. And this is one of the all time greatest games. Pilot Wings is famous. It was a launch game for the N64. Finally, we get to see a real rapper's game collection. And this is one of the all time masterpieces. And it's not even rated, it doesn't even have a rating. This game was never actually Love rated. Love the streams, Funky. You streaming more made 2020 more bearable donkey happy vglia froggers donkey possum donkey pog. Thank you, robot. And you know this this is the first game that was never actually rated by Zerb. It has no rating. If you see on the back here, this is where it should tell you why where it's rated, and it's not it's never been rated. We don't know if it's E T or M. There's no way to know. And I do have the game for this. I like to have the game on this one. And if you actually look back here at the back, if you like Pilot Wings Resort, and these are games, this is just good suggestions for people out there. If you guys like this game, you would probably like Steel Diver and Nintendo Dogs. Nintendo Dogs French Bulldog. This is just a good recommendation if you like this kind of game. Nintendo Dogs plus Cats also. Cats is in this Six one. Six Moten's Donkey. Love the content. And I got that on PC also. In case you're... Just in case you're thinking that I don't. Let me get this paw back. Perfect. All right. What's next up now? We got this Nintendo 64 show. To look inside, it uses. Let's see how it's made. This is the Nintendo screwdriver. Hey, donkey! Remember me and the guy that watches your videos. Hey, I remember that guy.
You're my superhero donkey thanks for spreading your knowledge of video games for all. Thank you Robert. Thank you Dalton and Jordan. Hey Dunk, I've played all your games. I rate them all 5 stars on the PS3 store. Thank you, thank you for giving me a 5 stars rating on the PS store. Having these mini One classics can't be legal, Dunk, the FBI is coming for you. Shut. Oh no, it's closed. Okay, I got it open. What was holding it was some shock mounts for the drive mechanism itself. These are the little points that were in the rubber bushings. Okay. So this is how it's made. Now look at the graphics. Look at the graphics chip and the uh this region. Look at the graphics. I want to I want to draw your attention to that. And Just look at the stumbling. little You see the little green? If you look like this, the little green parts, that's where they put the colors in, all the different colors. This Bunker. one can only simulate the color green. This is a prototype. There's a couple of ribbon cables here, see if I can disconnect them. Never disconnect that. Never, never disconnect that. He just broke it. He just broke the thing. And there's a battery in there too. Don't remove that. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to take this RF shield off and we'll see what's under it. Seems kind of like it's made of cardboard, like the RF shields of the. You don't take off the RF For shield. You are battling beaver fever thoughts and prayers. You don't take off the RF shield. You just exposed the data chip. Donkey, how were you made? How is he gonna play Pilot Wings Resort? Original Commodore 64 bread bin. Oh, that's the bread bin. Okay. Yo, Donkey, you're top 10 best draft guys ever. Thank you, Robert. Never unscrew the bread bin. That's how 3D0S are made. <laughs> Never unscrew the bread bin. What he's doing right now, he's gonna... That thing's gonna blow. This guy, this guy's gone. Is that the new PlayStation 6? No, this is the older PlayStation. The one with uh, SimCity. I'm gonna take this little light pipe out of here. Is that the Turbo Graphics? Don't Why take would this man destroy such a classic to such twangy cowboy tunes? <sighs> He's taking out the light. What did he say? The light? Light pipe out of here. He's taking out the light pipe. Fan of the light pipe. Does he want to die? Hey, Dunk, I know this is a controversial thing to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. You are better than Jake Paul there. I said it. Thank you so much, Robot. Uh, it's so crazy to be said to be better than Jake Paul. Uh, that's one of the biggest honors. This guy is crazy. He's taking out the light pipe. He's taking out the bread drive. He's taking out the colors chip. Oh, now look at what he's doing. Oh, God. Take the other half of the RF shield off. This one. Never touch that. Never actually touch that. If you touch that, you can shock the, the processor and you can blow the whole chip. People who know what I'm talking about are thinking that I'm thinking they're just saying that, and they're thinking that I'm right when I said that. One is actually made of metal.
And here's the board. This actually also contains a floppy controller. See, that's not right. That's not right. Look at this. Now, I want to draw attention to this. Look at the... See the R913? That's a resistor. The R913, the R912, the R914, the R915, these were discontinued resistors. This is a uh, this is a faulty board he's got here. That's why he can't run any games. He can only play SimCity on this thing. That's why he can't play any of the good games like Pilot Wings anymore on this. Because they didn't put the uh, they didn't they didn't do the right uh, calculations on this thing. And these are all these are all uh, knockoff chips. None of this Don't is official. This is not an official uh, chip here because you can see a lot of these. A lot of these little processors on there, all these little microprocessors are, uh, those are like, what is that? A diff that's an off-brand company. So you can see this is all fake. Tim McGraw probably made this. Jason, I love your new album. These are the two Gold connectors record. that go to Gold the Gold dollar drive. bill. Million dollar bill. These are the type that you slide it in and then push Thank the you robot for the million dollar to bill. Hold it in place. A couple Thank of you back less problems. And here's the battery. And it's a CR2032. No idea what'll happen when that battery dies. Hi gamer dunk I team, no please collab with me. I'm a Q duck hunt controller that works with counter mango. What are you saying, Robot, about Counter Strike? What do you say? What is this thing? Is this just like a standalone thing? I thought this was an add on. I thought this was an add on to the Nintendo 64. It looks like a standalone console, though. It is an add-on? Dunk. Let me look it up. Nintendo 64DB. Oh. <laughs> this dumb thing. <laughs> Six months of donkey. I should do this for PlayStation 6. You just put it on top of the old one. PlayStation 6 just goes under PlayStation 5. It's green because he exposed it to the outside air. He actually broke it. So sad. Look at this dumb thing. Alright. Wasn't there like a weird Mario paint that was only for this? Should I test it? Sure, might as well. Uh oh, don't do that, don't do that. Oh no, he's... <laughs> okay, what he's got there in the back, that's called an ohm reader. That's a ohm, that's a ohm reader. And if he hooks that up to the wrong wires, that whole thing's going to blow. This guy's gone. Just shy of three volts. Well, I may want to consider replacing that battery. He's still alive. He's still alive. Now let's get into the heat of the meat, the floppy drive mechanism itself. And then the rubber bushings are stuck to the lower half as well. Yep, it was. I've got... Oh, that was really great. 
Let's see how ketchup is made. Tomato ketchup is one of the world's most popular condiments and it can be found in many households around the world. We have it with burgers, fries, and just about anything that we can think of to complement. And just about anything. We have it with burgers, fries. That's too much. That's too much. He's putting too much on. What is this? A ketchup only burger? I can't watch this. I should be playing pilot wings. Fries and just about anything that we can think of to complement our meals. Heinz is one of the market leaders in ketchup, selling over 650 million bottles of ketchup around the world every year. We visited its European factory in the Netherlands to see how the world famous condiment is made. Here in Els, we make sauces for the Kraft Heinz company. Uh, our main product is ketchup, that's 70% of what we do. We make about 1.8 million bottles a day, and that relates Black. to about 175,000 tons of ketchup a year. The ketchup making pro. They're making 1.8 million ketchups a day. That's too much ketchup on there. How? Yeah, you. It's just ketchup. You don't even use it that much, do you? Process starts here, where crates hey, of tomato paste weighing one thousand three hundred kilograms of the all-time best mascots, the Noid Back. Since I know it. you're high up over there, when are you guys bringing back the Taco Bell dog? Ta Robot, I don't know what you're saying about the Taco Bell dog. You sound like the kind of guy that was probably buying up this million dollars. Of ketchup every Do day. Do the bubble gum. One next people need to know about rubber gum. Fluffy, what are you saying about bubble gum? Oh, okay, the rubber gum. Okay, that is true, actually. Fluffy has a point. And automated forklifts. The crates are open. All right. And then go to the paste dumper. Where these huge Ronin pings oh, the, the, dumper. the package. <laughs> How were four clips made? The fuck is this? What did he call this? The paste dumper? Out of the package. Where these huge Ronin pings squeeze the paste out of the package. Then go to the paste dumper. The paste dumper. Dunkey sold out. Big ketchup taking over his stream. No, I didn't sell out. I didn't. No, I never sold out to ketchup. I never sold out to ketchup. Don't listen to that. I've only sold out to the mustard company, which is also Heinz, I believe. Where these huge Ronin pings squeeze the paste out of the package. What the hell just happened? What just happened? Mustard owns ketchup? No. Mustard doesn't own ketchup. Ketchup owns mustard. If mustard owns ketchup, that's going to change. That's going to change my whole outlook on life. Yeah. After the paste has been extracted. Yeah. Oh, this is a good place to hide a body. This is what you guys are eating out here. Every time you guys eat a cheeseburger and you put on a pound of this, this is what you're eating. Every time you guys put on the, the whole bottle of ketchup, like at the start of the video, this is what the burger looks like under there. Somewhere there's one burger under that. <laughs> After the paste has been extracted, oh, it yep. sits in the storage. You gotta hose it down. He got a hose down. This says the ketchup hoser. He's got to hose that ketchup down. Bin, where it's mixed with water to give. He's got to wash it off. For a smoother consistency. This makes it easier to transport to the storage tank, where it will sit until moving on to the ketchup kitchen. Oh, what's that? Onto the ketchup, where it will sit until pasta too. 
This is for making pasta. This is such a sham corporation. Heinz is such a lowly, lowly rated corporation. All their all their equipment is to make pasta. That's what they make their ketchup in. What a sham. What a sham. Until moving on to the ketchup kitchen. This is our ketchup kitchen. Look at how look at how, look at how poorly run this is. It will sit until moving. It says pasta too. What's in there? Old ketchup. Old ketchup from last week that never was been sitting in there. This is our ketchup kitchen, and this is where we actually produce the tomato ketchup. Ketchup is made of five ingredients: sugar, vinegar, tomato paste, brine, and the secret spices. The spi What's the? Does anybody know what the what the secret spices are? What's in there? Pasta? <laughs> Salt? Alright, I'm gonna try and piece it together. I'm gonna try and piece together the secret spices. Okay, somebody is saying sand. Could be, could be sand. Somebody is saying salt. I'm definitely assuming salt. Cumin, could be cumin. That is, that would give it that red coloring. Right? Is that the red one? Paprika, yep, could that's also red. Give it that red color. Only cinnamon. Bubbles saying it's only cinnamon. It's just pure cinnamon. <laughs> they just dump a shit ton of cinnamon into ketchup. Cheeto dust. Kraft. Oh, that's interesting. Kraft mac and cheese cheese powder. Yeah, that is kind of. It does kind of look like that. Maybe they did just buy up a bunch of Kraft macaroni and dump it all into a big box. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's this. I'm gonna say salt. Uh that red turmeric. Yep, salt turmeric. Sand cinnamon. And a little pinch of the Kraft macaroni and cheese, cheese powder. Spices are those by hand. We dose everything, we mix it, and afterwards it goes into our process. The process is mainly about heating the ketchup and then cooling it down. Afterwards we fill it into the bottles. Mm -hmm. But before any ketchup can be shipped, each batch must be rigorously tested through this contraption, which Heinz calls the quantifier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is our quantifier. It's a method where we measure viscosity of our Heinz tomato ketchup. It's a methodology that we use in all our ketchup factories so that we compare the ketchup uh, quality for all the factories. What we do is we put a certain amount of ketchup inside the quantifier, we release it and we measure how fast it has traveled after 10 seconds. Point five within range. <laughs> it's a special method designed by Heinz. The ketchup cannot move faster than 0.028 miles per hour. If it has traveled too far, we have to block it, cannot sell it. Don't if it's be, within the range, we can keep on wrapping it. big man. So wait, what did they like do no way are they testing that? No way are they testing it. Like, how many ketchups did they make before they did that test? How much did they make? Like, it looked like they made like a trillion, like, they made like 700 tons. And then they do a one test and they go, Oh, dump it, dump it in the trash, throw it in the trash, make some more. The ketchup was too fast, dump it. 
for the empty bottles. They go into the filler. We have 70 filling heads. It's a filler that it, uh, works by weight. So a bottle comes in, we check the weight of the empty bottle, we fill it to the Rustic. proper oh, weight that's of the ketchup, cool. that's and then we cool. check again if we reach the empty bottle. Filler that it, I like this part. Uh, works by weight. So a bottle comes in, we check the weight of the empty bottle, we fill it to the proper weight with ketchup, and then we check again oh, if we reach the filling weight. Look at how weight. crazy that is. The boxes with caps are emptied at the bottom floor by the operator and transported upstairs. What's that? Oh, that's the cap. Upstairs, we make sure the caps are put in the right position and go to a single Look row of caps so that we can position them properly on the bottle in the filling machine. I could just screw those Scrunky on. Donkey back at it again. I could screw all those on faster than the robot. It would be faster just to bring me in. I'll make them faster. And for this bottle we have three labels. So we have a neck label, a back label and a front label. These labels are self-adhesive, so we don't need any glue for it. After the label we go to a huh? tray packer, where we get the tray from the, the bottom. We fold Donkey's it around Castle. the bottles. After that put a shrink wrap around it and make sure the bottles are tight and packed in the, in the tray. What the, the bottles. hell? After that, put a shrink wrap around it and make sure the bottles Speed are tight and packed in the... The whole thing is automated. ...in the tray. The only human needed to do this is the ketchup hoser. Big dunk. You only need the ketchup hoser and the, and the, and the ketchup uh, sp speed tester. You only need two people to make ketchup. You need the tester and the hoser. And what if they do a robot that can test it? Then we'll be out of we'll be out of business. They won't need us anymore. From the tray packer we go to the pelletizer where a robot puts the trays in the right position. And from the right position we make layer for layer on the pellet. After that we put a shrink wrap around it. The whole thing is automated. That's insane. Now that we've seen how it. Okay, what the fuck was that? <laughs> this is why you can never get rid of people. If you put in robots, this is what's going to happen. You see this, robots? This is what's going to happen. You fuck with us. How its iconic ketchup is made. How did Heinz become the prominent brand it is today? Heinz was founded in Pittsburgh in 1869 by a 25-year-old named Henry John Heinz, who began his business by selling his mother's horse radish recipe. The fuck is that? Put a cork in the tap. How many robots do you think he had back then? Over the years, Heinz expanded his catalogue, selling pickles, vinegar, and eventually tomato ketchup, which launched in 1876. It was a roaring success, and in 1880... There's the old robot. This is the old robots back in the day. They used to look like people. The company began shipping the sauce to the UK. Following the overwhelming popularity of Heinz ketchup, Heinz started producing 13 million bottles a year and exporting them all over the world. Which explains why you're never too far from a bottle of Heinz tomato ketchup. All right. What is how they make ketchup? It's all automated. Not even a single human touches it. Now you guys gotta see this, how they make gum. This is gonna, you're never gonna be able to have gum again. When you see this, you'll never be able to have gum again. I forget what's the funny one. Dentist. A gum base, the stuff that makes gum chewy. 
Traditionally, the base came from tree resin. Nothing beats the chew. Chewing gum dates back to the ancient Greeks who chewed resin from trees. Modern chewing gum was patented in the U.S. in 1869 by, believe it or not, a dentist. In 1928, another American invented... A dentist? A dentist came up with it? Bubble gum. Talk about a bad dentist. What kind of a dentist comes up with that? Bubble gum comes in gumballs of all colors and sizes. But for blowing bubbles... That is true, actually. That is actually true. A dentist also invented cotton candy. They invented it just so they could be in business. Because nobody was going to the dentist. So they had to come out with all this invention. So people actually had to go. Nothing beats the chewy, gooey pink stuff in the twist wrap. It all starts with a gum base, the stuff that makes gum chewy. Traditionally, the base came from tree resin. Today, it's synthetic, made of plastics and rubbers. <laughs> gum is made out of plastic and rubber. <laughs> Don't ever eat gum, you guys. Never eat the gum. It's made out of plastic. <laughs> That's the plastic. Look at all that gunk. That's the plastic hoard. They pour the gum base into a mixer. Then add color and flavoring. That's Kool-Aid. Oh, that's blood, actually. That's goat's blood. Then add color. So, so far, gum is plastic and goat's blood. Color and flavoring. As it begins mixing, they pour in glucose syrup, a sweetener. Because it's liquid, it helps keep the gum base soft. I don't know about that stuff. Next, they add dextrose, a powdered sweetener. The fuck they is blend that? the ingredients for about 20 minutes. The stirring action builds up heat, which... That's melted... I think that's melted human flesh. Stirring action builds up heat, which melts everything together. Now this is where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. This is the uh, Pilot Wings soundtrack, by the way. The mixture's ready when it reaches... <laughs> Somebody go and chomp on that. Big ass gum. What if somebody falls in there? They'll be stuck in there for life. Is the consistency of bread dough? They transfer it by oh, it's bread to dough. a machine called the pre-extruder. Oh, the pre-extruder. The machine squeezes the mixture through a narrow opening, like squeezing toothpaste from the tube. This transforms the big, bulky wad into thin, manageable strips that can then go through the extruders. Okay. The extruders squeeze each strip down to the actual width of a piece of bubble gum. It comes out as one long, continuous stream to be cut into bite-sized pieces later on. This extrusion process heats up the gum. If they were to cut and wrap it now, it would stick to the wrapper. So the next stop is a cooling Cookie. chamber. The oh, gum the goes in chamber. for 15 minutes at between 3 to 7 degrees That's Celsius. That's the opposite of what I said. When the bubble gum comes out, it's cooled down enough for what they call the cut and wrap. One machine does both jobs in a fraction of a second. 
Watch the action in slow motion. As the continuous stream of gum enters on one end, the machine cuts it into bite-sized pieces, pushes each piece into a wax paper wrapper, then twists both ends of the wrapper closed. They're putting us out of business, you guys. They're taking us out of business. <laughs> Do the workers ever get fresh gum? <laughs> yeah. Well, there are no workers, so no. It's just robots. It's robots making everything, everything you guys like. Robots is making it. Ketchup is robots. Gum is robots. Cereal? Cereal is still people. Don't worry. No way can they. they you, can't, you can't do cereal with robots. I'd love to see a cereal robot. Wouldn't be possible. Here's the slow motion replay from a different Thank angle. Thank you. How fast is it doing that? The oh machine God. processes 900 pieces Look of bubblegum per minute. Oh my God. Look at how fast it goes. Last stop, packaging. The bubblegum moves on to a scale that automatically weighs out the right amount per tub. They seal the keeps tub with plastic them. to make it airtight. This keeps the bubblegum fresh. Ever wonder why bubblegum is pink? It's because that's the only color Walter Deemer had on hand when he invented this treat back in 1928. Since then, the color just stuck. Oysters, how it's made. I don't know about that one. All right. Everything is everything is robots. Everything is robots right now. But I you know what would never be robots? Reese's Puff cereal. You could never do this with robots. You could never make this with robots. You would never get it right. How it's made cereal. How cereal is made. I guarantee you. I guarantee you you can't do cereal with robots. It's too, uh, it's too advanced. This is the one, this is our one, this is our one uh, zone where we can be in charge. ...in America in the 1950s, and today you'll find versions of it on breakfast tables around the world. It's one of the first things some people reach for in the morning. That's Raisin Bran. This particular blend of frosted cereal is a combination of wheat flakes, corn flakes, and granola clusters. Half the flakes are frosted and half aren't. It's raisin bran. And there's honey rolled. There's no raisins though. Oats and rice in the granola. Actually, that's uh, honey bunch. Honey bunches of oats. Now that I'm thinking about it. To make the corn flakes, they start with kernels of corn. They measure out a specific amount and release it into an industrial version of a pressure cooker. The operator locks the lid and the system pipes See? See? No robots. You need the operator. You need the cereal operator. You can't do robots on this. Water and flavorings directly into the cooker. It 
Can I hear it? Can I hear it in chat for the humans? Can I get a humans chant going? Tate for an even distribution of heat. And Thank you, Zoop. Wood, wood. How is spaghetti made? Oh, we gotta see that. Thank you, Patty. And an even cooking of the grains. After about three hours, the kernels have absorbed moisture and softened. As the corn flows out of the cooker, a screw conveyor system moves it towards a dryer. They Somebody said eat the humans. Who said that? Don't let that, that's a robot, don't let him in chat. Cook a measured amount of whole wheat kernels in water and flavorings. They only need an hour in the rotating pressure cooker. Okay. Like the corn, the whole wheat absorbs a significant amount of water during cooking. This the is kernels advanced. Are about 30% moisture when they exit the cooker. They now merge with the corn en route to the dryer. The drying time will bring the moisture content down to about 19%. Cereal is so advanced. It's such an advanced uh, product when you think about it. It's something that could never be done with robots. Making the kernels the right consistency to be transformed into flakes. The grains now flow into a mill. The mill has two big heavy rollers, similar to the kind used mm -hmm. to level tarmac. The kernels fall between these rollers. And they exert tons of pressure to flatten each individual kernel into a flake. In the process, the wheat flakes turn whiter and the corn turn more yellow. See? 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 You need a petter. What is your favorite tongue twister? You need a cereal petter. My favorite tongue twister is the uh, the Donkey Kong one. You need to be human to pet the food. At this point, the flakes are still quite soft and not at all tasty. A trip through a long toaster oven will give it that crisp syrup. Okay, actually, I think that was not actually a job. I think they were just doing that for the video. I need more evidence. I'm not convinced. I think actually that there's not a petter. I don't think a guy actually picks it up for no reason. <laughs> but there is still a that one guy. Remember that first guy? Real consistency. It's a high temperature toasting and reduces the moisture content from 19% to just three. How is how it's Here, made made? You can see the flakes before toasting and after. See the the, the before and after guy. Gotta have him. The toasting not only makes the corn and wheat flakes crispy, it also enhances the color and flavor. A ride on a conveyor cools them down. Along the way, they split into two different streams. One stream of the mixed flakes travels towards the sugar coating station. The other <gasps> heads into a flavoring drum. <gasps> The drum revolves to gently toss the cereal. Oh no! Oh no! Look what they did! Look what they did! They t they eliminated the hoser job. They eliminated the cereal hoser job. It's just a robot hosing it down. How the fuck did they get a robot to be able to hose it down? The sprayer applies a granola kind of flavoring. Oh my god, he's applying a granola flavor. The stream of wheat and cornflakes enters the sugar coating drum. No! The sprayer disperses a sugar and water mixture as the drum tosses the flakes. No! Then they travel through a dryer, and this cools oh my the god. to the flakes. The frosted and the flavored flakes <laughs> now flow onto the same conveyor. It bounces the flakes around to blend them together. To boost the nutrition content, they add honey flavored granola. The granola clusters flow onto a conveyor. They'll merge with the frosted and flavored flakes. Where's the taster? This feeder pipe showers granola onto the flakes. This frosted cereal is now ready for supermarket shelves. 
go, don't go. Machinery dispenses specific amounts into a plastic sleeve, which is heat sealed, then severed at both ends. Mechanical arms then pick up boxes, open them, and place them on a conveyor. Push rods guide the bags of cereal into the boxes. The best before date and other information have been printed on the outside. Nozzles apply glue to the ends. So this is the least humans. Cereal is actually one a one person job. This is actually less people than the last thing. <laughs> it was just the one guy at the start. That's all they needed was the one guy. Where's the box liquor? That's true, the box liquor's coming up. There's got to be a box liquor. The box is brushed by a side barrier that closes. Look, you can see a guy. You can see a guy's foot. See his foot? He's doing something. A side barrier. He's probably just filming it, actually. Those dang robots. That closes them. Producing and packaging this frosted cereal blend has taken about five hours. Now people can wake up to their first meal of the day knowing how it's made. Cheers from the breakfast. All right, well, I thought cereal was too advanced. But that was actually the most automated one yet. Now, olive oil. They could never make olive oil. How is Dunky made? I would love to see a robot make olive oil. It would blow up. It would blow up right on the spot. Oh my god. Thank you so much, Moodles. Oh my god. Thank you, evil. No way. No way will they ever do olive oil. They'll never do olive oil as a robot. Save the humans. The ancient Greek poet Homer called olive oil liquid gold. And today, a little drizzle can still dazzle. <laughs> Make a bit. <laughs> Make a bet how many people make olive oil. Alright, I make a bet. I make a bet how many people should we say? How many people to make olive oil? I say one to two or two to four. One to two or two plus. How about that? No, wait, that's not a good bet. <laughs> Over two. It's one to two or three plus. Wait, how do I take back a bet? How do I cancel the bet? This isn't good. I didn't I didn't do it right. One to two or it's over two. It's like okay, listen. If you if you pick two plus, that means three. That's actually three. So it's either one to two or three plus. Not two plus. Here, I'll remake it. I'll remake it so that nobody gets confused. How do I how do I cancel it? Cancel the cancel the thing. How do I do refund? Okay, I did a refund. I did a refund. All right. Boom. Okay. Okay. Like fine wine. Premium olive oil can bring a complexity of flavors to the table and create a real taste sensation. Lovely.
Lovely. The what if a person on the line is half robot working past. with two other people? For thousands of years, people have harvested its fruit and crushed it with stones to extract the precious oil. In those early days, olive oil wasn't just used in food. It fueled lamps and was a medicinal ointment. What are people saying? What are people saying on this bit? Wow, people are thinking three or more. Really? Today's thriving olive groves are living proof that our appetite for olive oil hasn't waned. When green olives turn a violet red, <gasps> they're ripe and ready for harvest. The olive pickers. That's right. It's going to be like a ton of people have to go and pick all the olives off. This one is going to have a ton of people involved. That's why it's so expensive. What the Workers fuck is that shake thing? The olives off the branch with vibrating rakes. Alright, so there's no person that'd pick them off. It's a robot. Robot. Robot shakes all the olives off a tree. <laughs> That's one human down. Human down. How many robots make Assassin's Creed? <gasps> the olives? Two? It's people doing it. It's people doing it. It's a robot. It's a... Wait. Oh, no. This is... This counts as half. This counts as half a person. Because the robot's really doing all the work. They're just holding the robot. It's two guys, but they only count as half a human. So it's... This is only counts as one person. ...fall on nets spread beneath the trees. <laughs> The harvested olives are then funneled into the factory. They fall down a chute into a large vat of pure water. A How many people sucks the olives and water into a vibrating bin. Okay, the vibrating this separates bin. out leaves and twigs as the water drains away. Okay. The cleaned olives. How many people made hi, Bubsy Three D? Can you say hi to my friend Galvin Hessen stream? Say hi to who? Galvin? Gavin. Hey, Gavin. What's going on, Gavin? Now bounce merrily on their way towards the crusher. Oh, the crusher, okay. A few centuries ago, the crusher was an apparatus powered by a donkey. Donkey! Today, though, a motor drives olives 600 you. kilogram granite wheels to grind the olives, pits and all, into a paste. I need the donkey! Looks nasty. Once the paste reaches the desired consistency, it's, like it's over to a computerized system that regulates the temperature of the paste as an auger mixes it. <laughs> what the fuck is this thing? Look at this old ass. Look at this olive oil program. Who made this olive oil program? This looks like it's still on the first computer ever made. Them ...that regulates the temperature of the paste as an auger <laughs> mixes it. <laughs> the oil is then separated from the paste using this machine. Windows 95. Traditional extracting techniques involve spreading the paste on mats hey, donkey, and then stacking funny. them Do to you know press the out the oil. Of beaver fever? This system is more... You're thinking you got beaver fever? Well, if you think you got it, see if you can uh, swim faster. That's a good way to tell. More high tech. Rows of metal plates dip into the paste, and the oil adheres to them. A spin in a centrifuge separates the residual paste from the oil. The result is virgin olive oil. <gasps> Who is that? I see a hand. I hear. I see a person. The result is virgin olive oil. Now, is this a job? Is this a job? The stirrer. <laughs> I'm feeling like this is not a job. I think this is just for the video. They're just showing you to just have a person just do this. 
The stern man. The tester. The tester is going to see how fast that olive oil goes. Is this a job or not? Because this could bump us up to two. A lot of people are saying no, it doesn't count. We'll see, we'll see. See, okay, wait, wait a minute. They just, p they picked it up and they dumped it back in. They literally did nothing there. But now it looks like they're doing a test. A sample of every batch goes to the testing room. <gasps> there's a man who has a nose for the job. Okay, two. We're up to two people. We're up to two people. There's a testing man. He smells it. He inhales the olive oil's aroma. He's the smeller. Like a glass of fine wine, it should have a certain bouquet. And it should <laughs> taste intensely fruity. If the oil makes the grade with this tester, the entire batch is ready for packaging. Yeah. He spat it out. The process is entirely automated, ensuring it's all done hygienically. A conveyor funnels these tins into a line for filling. He puts it in his mouth and he spits it back out into the olive oil. Filling. A mechanized system then feeds the <laughs> olive oil directly from big tanks into the tins. A measuring device controls the amount that goes into each one. How fast it comes out. At the next station, a metal disc is inserted for the bottom of the can. Conveyor flips the can so it lands right side up, ready to pack. The premium grade oil is bottled. Dark glass is used to protect the oil from the sun's ultraviolet light, which could cause the olive oil to degrade and lose its intensity. That's crazy. After an automated fill up, the threaded necks on the bottles are then capped. Machinery then press fits and screws the caps on for an airtight seal. Equipment then glues and applies the labels to the bottles. Is that meat? Yeah, ground beef. They're rubbing ground beef on the bottle. Preserved and protected, this olive oil is now on its way to the shops and ultimately the table. That was, that was two people. That was two people. <laughs> it was three people. It was three. We, have, we just have to go off of the people we saw. There's the two pickers. And, you know, to be honest, there's probably more than two pickers. I don't know, maybe there's only two. There's two pickers, and then there's the sniffer. So it's a three-man, it's a three-man job. And even if we're counting the pickers as one guy, the sniffer counts as two people, because he's such a master. He's such a master of the craft. So I think we gotta give it to the three, the three people. Love you, don't keep doing you. Olive oil really was one of the hardest ones to make. Now, if this was cereal, then you would only need one person. How is it made crayons? How is it made cheese? Oh, somebody said spaghetti. How do they make spaghetti? Pasta grannies. Alright, how many grandmas are in this video? Let's get a bet going.
Let's see how many grandmas we got in this. Okay, that's one. That's one. Two. Three. Dunkster, thank you for dunktastic videos. I love you in chat. <laughs> I really hope that you don't bet on one to three because we just saw three right in the first second of the video. <laughs> I really hope you didn't pick one to three. <laughs> if we see another grandma, it's already over. <laughs> That's a grandpa. The Martin. No wait, that's a grandma. That's a grandpa. The Martelli family have been making past. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was that? Is that a grandma? Well, that's an old lady, but I don't know if she... what's her involvement. Making pasta for ninety years. They make one shape per day, and today it's spaghetti. Chiara is our guide. Their similar flour comes from Italy and it's mixed with cold water. The dough is pushed through a bronze plate with holes in it called a die. It's only three grammars so far. Bronze gives the pasta a rough texture, which helps sauce cling to the spaghetti. The spaghetti is given a trim and a gentle blow dry before being taken upstairs to the airing cupboard. Now put it in the blow dryer. This is the drying room, the place where spaghetti and spaghetti last for 50 hours, 50, 52 hours, okay? Great 52 hours? Time and low temperatures. What? Tonight, my cousin will come here to change the direction of the, <laughs> of the tray, okay? And uh, you see the, there is a fan. Let it, let it move the, yeah. What? Where? Somebody saw a fourth grandma? Where? <laughs> she was walking in the background or something? Uh, you can see her through the glass door. <laughs> She's in the pasta drying room. There's just a grandma sitting in there. And, uh, you see the, there is a... Let it, let it move the, Love yeah. you, donkey. I like all your videos. Ha ha, so funny. I rate five stars. It's still only three. It's still only three. Yeah. Then it's packed in bright yellow bags. Traditionally, pasta was sold loose. There's a photo of a baby there that actually knocks off one grandma. And wrapped in yellow paper in northern Italy. The special ingredient in this process is love. The extended Martelli family all work and live next to the factory. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think I think I might have saw one. She might be next. There's like a there's like an older man in the back, but she might be next to Martelli him. Martelli family all work and live. No, that's a no, that's a younger guy. Can live next to the factory. No, Grandma. Has We're still up. Oh of this quality only needs a simple sauce. Uh-oh. And the Martelli's favorite sauce only needs a simple... Now, I think this grandma has already been seen. This is... No, this is not for it. This is not for This is... Grandma is from... Wait. One. Two. Three. That's her. That's her from the intro. See? So this is actually the third grandma still. <laughs> She's new? No, this is her. Look. That's her. She's got the same shirt. That's definitely her. That's her. Twins. <laughs> Needs a simple sauce. And the Martelli's favorite dish is spaghetti carbonara made with sausage. Sono Chiara e sto facendo gli spaghetti con la carbonara alla salsiccia. Chiara, under the watchful eye of her Aunt Rosa, is showing us how. She skins two sausages and crumbles the meat. 
While it is frying, she beats two egg yolks and mixes them with grated Parmigiano cheese. She adds the spaghetti to boiling salted water and cooks it al dente. Rosa checks to see if it's done. Chiara adds the spaghetti to the meat and then stirs in the egg mixture. Gli spaghetti alla carbonara di salsiccia sono pronti. As soon as it's ready, the rest of the family when appear in When you watch tucking. spaghetti vids instead of taco vids SMH. It's delicious. Click on the subscribe button for regular... It was only three. It was only three. It was only three. It was only three. Four? No, there was not four. There was only three. Look. Look. One. Two. Three. That's it. That's it. That's all there was. Oh, wait. Four. There was four. <laughs> wait, what was the bet? Oh, four. Oh, oh yeah. Four one. <laughs> the baby. <laughs> the baby picture. Oh, yeah. The baby picture knocked it off one. The Martelli family have been. But there's also this, this lady been watching you on youtube for years glad to finally be a part of the twitch community too she could be a grandma so that that also seals the deal for four plus we don't know her involvement we don't know her involvement at all but i'm just going for just to be safe you got to be careful when you do these bets you guys because you never know what's going to happen in a world like this Don't tell Dream. Alright, I'll give you guys an easy one. This is an easy way to make money. How it's made. This is the last one. The last one for tonight. How it's made food. How is food made? How it's made chips? Scams? <laughs> Scams how it's made? How are bananas made? That's a good question. How it's made bananas? It's official. Ban All right. New bet. All right, how many bananas are in this video? This is the last one for tonight. This is a big bet. Are you saying it's one to 40 bananas or even more than 40 bananas in the video? And right off the bat, I'm seeing one here. I'm seeing one right off the bat. Now be careful what you pick. Wow, a lot of people are saying more than 40. Bananas are the most popular fruit in the UK, and we scoffed almost one billion of them last year. But unlike apples or pears, we import our bananas from far off places. Here in Costa Rica, this plantation is the size of 324. Okay. I'm not seeing any here. I'm not even seeing a single one, actually. It only counts if you can see them good. You can't just like assume they're there. Football pitches. 
The workers use a pulley system to get themselves around. It's meant to transport the fruit, but catching a lift saves them from walking. Modern bananas are sterile, so each new plant must be taken from an old cutting. That's one big banana? This is pretty tough work as the plants can grow several meters tall. If the workers didn't replant each year, the plantation would stop producing. Okay, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I think that's sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Uh, I don't know, I won't count those. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. I see 34 here. Once the fruit begins to emerge, the plants must be pruned. The large purple flowers at the base divert energy that will produce bigger, tastier bananas. So the These don't count. These are He just threw these on the floor. Workers remove it. The remaining bunches are put into bags coated with insecticides to protect them from being eaten. Yeah, it doesn't count if they're in a bag. To keep the insects at bay, the crops are also sprayed, but not by an aeroplane. They use a high-tech chopper, which is more agile. It's controlled by satellite technology, which stops local workers being covered with pesticides in their own homes. These bananas have a radius of three centimeters and... Okay, 30, I think we're at 33, 34. Though they're not ripe yet, now is the perfect time to collect them. When the fruit has reached this ideal size, these guys have the job of preparing them for the packing plant. Their protective bags are removed, and foam inserts are placed between the bunches. Okay, the bag has been removed. I'm going to count this as one big banana, though. Oh, people are saying repeat. These are repeat. Oh. I'll count it. I'll, I'll say that's one banana. So that brings us up to 32. Cheers. If the fruit have even the tiniest bruises, UK customers leave them on the shelf, so they're protected right from the start. Enormous bunches are loaded onto the pulley system and join a long traffic jam More of done. other fruit heading for the processing plant. All right, this could be for other fruit. This little conveyor line. Plant. I'm going to say there's two bananas on that thing. That brings us up to 32. 32 we're at. <laughs> oh, here come a couple more. 34. 34 bananas. Now, you'd need an enormous trolley to buy a bunch of 60 bananas with your weekly shopping. <laughs> so now they're separated into smaller ones before being <laughs> sent for a bath. Uh, Tough EU laws legislate for bananas size, sh 37. shape, and even their curve. So the workers must be sure there are no slip-ups with any fruit that aren't up to scratch. Any that fail are thrown onto the waste conveyor, but they aren't discarded. They'll be used to feed local livestock or sent to be processed into baby food. The remaining bananas are then sent off for another bath, which kills off any spiders who may be trying to hitch a ride to a supermarket near you. The fruit is given its trademark branding, and boxes are built to store them for their long journey across the Atlantic. Bananas is the most people of any food so far. Bananas is like the most people, and this, bananas is like the cheapest food. We're paying this robots more than we're paying the people that make these bananas. This plantation has produced over 270,000 boxes of bananas. They're packed up and sent by the lorry load to the docks. 
here, they're put on board ships in specially cooled containers for the journey to Europe. They won't be enjoying any sun on the deck, though. It's an 11-day journey, and being in the sun would ripen them too early. Day I write this. They won't be enjoying any sun on the deck. This is hmm. like... This is like... Three bananas in there. So that brings us up to 39. Painters for the journey to Europe. They won't be enjoying any sun on the deck, though. It's an 11 day journey, and being in the sun would ripen them too early. Thirty-nine. When wow. Finally unloaded. Well, that was close. You guys got it close. That was actually a pretty good bet. Thirty-nine. So the people that went one through, one through forty actually got the won the bet here. The bananas are still green. This means they can be stored until the shops need them. They're stacked in sealed ripening rooms. When the stores need them, these rooms will be flooded with ethylene gas. Oh, these are 3D. 3D. I said that counts as half a banana. 39.5. This gas ripens the bananas at a regular, measurable pace, which means the stores know exactly when they are ready for the shelves. There's at least 13 3D So, bananas. from the exotic fields of a Costa Rican plantation to the supermarket trolley in the UK, <laughs> the Brits are certainly bananas about their bananas. Alright. I guess that was probably more than 40. <laughs> Slightly more than 40. It's all repeats. <laughs> all repeats. It's a, about For this one, I had to give it one more banana because there's definitely at least one there. In the UK, the Brits are. All right. Well, I'm getting off. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm just going to watch one last video before I get off. Just, here we go. Ah. See you guys later. Bye bye. Go bye. What the fuck? Nice!